Welcome back to Source Decoded. I'm Benjamin. Today, let's talk about values and operators. In the last video, we established that a computer does things with information. In programming terms, we call those things that it does operators or operations, and the information values. We also wrote a small program that did something with information. So let's look at that program and break it down in terms of values and operators so we can see what they are. Our program was 2 plus 2, and you remember we were surprised that the answer was 4. If you had to guess what here is values and what here is operators, you could probably uh, take a reasonable stab at it. The 2 is a value, the plus is an operator, and the 2 is another value. An operator is like a little machine that takes inputs and usually returns an output. This operator, the addition operator, takes two inputs, numbers, and produces an output, which is another number. There are other operators as well, like 4 minus 2, which again takes two inputs and produces an output. Now when I'm writing this out, I'm saying input space operator space output. The spaces are not necessarily important to the program, but I leave them in there for readability. It's important that you remember that programs that you write, you're also going to have to read. So do things that make it easier to read. The program doesn't care about the space. I care about the space, so I'm going to put it in there. Now this is pretty interesting and fun that you can turn your JavaScript console into a calculator. Don't worry, this will get more interesting. What happens, do you think, if we chain a bunch of these together? What is 4 times 2 plus 11? Well, it's 19. But remember that I said that these operators take two inputs and produce an output. What we have here is three inputs, three values, and two operators. So how is that working? The computer can only do things one at a time. So what it does here is breaks this statement down into smaller pieces and evaluates them individually. The first thing it will do is 4 times 2, and it's going to turn that into a number, which will be 8, and then it will add 11, and we get 19. Just like you learned about in math class, there are rules about which operators go first. I won't go into all of those here, uh, but you can read up on it in the documentation. You can also use parentheses to group things together to make sure that the computer evaluates these before that, um, and that can be really useful as well. Up to this point, we've only dealt with one type of value, a number, but there are other types. Numbers are cool, but chances are you're going to want to write a program that deals with text at some point, and the type that we use for dealing with text is called a string. We can input a string by putting some stuff inside of quotes. So I can say, quote, hello, and another quote, and that is a string. JavaScript stores each of these characters inside of the string in memory in a row, and it kind of strings them together like pearls on a necklace. That's kind of why we call it a string. Can you operate on strings? What happens if we try to add two strings together? Oh, it glues them together. And you notice it didn't put a space between hello and world because we didn't ask it to do that. All it did was take our two strings, hello and world, and stuck them together. If we want a space in there, we have to specify that. Hello plus space plus world gives us hello world like we expect. Now, you can add strings together. Can you subtract them? Let's try that. Say I have a string, Swiss cheese, and I want to subtract the cheese. What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to end up with a string of just Swiss? No, we end up with a nan. And what in the world is a nan anyway? Well, to answer this question, let's back up a little bit. Remember how I said that you could add strings together? I actually lied. You can't add strings together. That plus character represents 
two different operators. When you use it with numbers, it represents the addition operator, and when you use it with strings, it represents the concatenation operator. When JavaScript looks at this program, it looks at both sides of the operator, what the types of those values are, and chooses the appropriate operator. The minus sign doesn't mean anything in terms of strings. We can't subtract strings. That doesn't make any sense to JavaScript, even if it might make sense to you. The designers of JavaScript knew that this was going to happen, that somebody was going to try and subtract strings. So they had to make a choice. They could either call this invalid and make the program crash, or they could try and be helpful to you and try and guess what you were kind of thinking. And in a lot of places, the designers of JavaScript took the second approach. They're really trying to be helpful, and that helpfulness kind of gets in the way sometimes and produces some unexpected results. To explain what's going on when we try to subtract strings, let's go back to addition here for a second. What happens if I add a string and a number? Hello and the number 12. What am I going to get? I'm going to get hello 12. Notice that 12 has been put inside the string. What JavaScript has done is it's looked at this statement and said we got a string over here and a number over here. I can't add a string and a number. I need to make this make sense. So what I'm going to do is turn the number into a string so that I can concatenate them together. This is called type coercion, and it's something that JavaScript does a lot. It turns whatever the thing was that doesn't make sense into something that does kind of make sense, and then it makes its best guess at what the operator should be. When we subtract two strings, like Swiss and cheese, Swiss cheese and cheese, I guess. JavaScript looks into this and says, it doesn't make sense to subtract strings. What does it make sense to subtract? Well, I do know how to subtract numbers. So it's going to turn these strings into numbers and try and subtract them. Well, what happens when you turn a string into a number? That doesn't really make sense. So what it turns it into is this special NAN, or not a number, and then it subtracts NAN from NAN because it knows how to do that. You can also subtract NAN, or you can also subtract a string from NAN, and you get a NAN, or you can subtract 12 from NAN, and you still get a NAN. Now this is a little confusing because I said that JavaScript is going to convert the string into a number, but what it converted it into was a not a number. Well, NAN or not a number in JavaScript terms is a number, and this is how it behaves. That might not make sense, but it's the way JavaScript is, and if you chew on it for long enough, uh, it might start to make sense for you. So that's type coercion. And it's important to remember that JavaScript does this. If you ask it to do something that doesn't make sense, it's going to try and make sense of it, and that can have some unintended consequences. Let's talk about one more type of value. Once upon a time, in the mid-1800s, lived a guy named George Boole. He was a mathematician, and his contribution to the world was to define a system of logic that worked on just two values, trues and falses. And it turned out to be really useful because the computers that we all use today are Boolean logic machines. They run on these two values, true and false, on or off, one or zero, whatever you want to call it. Which is remarkable that something so simple as this two-value logic system and the operations that he defined could do something as cool as we see computers do today. But that is exactly what they're doing. This idea of Boolean logic has also surfaced in most programming languages, including JavaScript. So let's look at the two Boolean values. They are true and false. Notice that I don't have to wrap quotes around them. In fact, if I wrap quotes around them, uh, that is not a Boolean value. That is a string of true, and those are different. True is not the same as true. So let's look at some of the operators. We have and, or, and equals. 
Not all operators are represented by a single character. Uh, these Boolean operators are two ampersands, and you got to make sure you get two ampersands, two pipes, and two equal signs. Otherwise, something else is going to happen because one ampersand means something totally different. When we take a true and we say true or false, we're going to get true because or returns true if one of the inputs is true. If they're both false, false or false, whoops, false or false gives us false. There is also and, true and true is true, true and, oops, I almost did it, true and false is false. And returns true if both of the inputs are true. So and, false and false is false. The last one is equals, which returns true if both inputs are the same. So true equals true is true, and false equals false is false. Now this seems really simplistic, um, but it actually turns out to be really useful, and you will use these Booleans all the time. Now there is another operator that we need to talk about relating to Booleans. All of the operators that we've talked about so far, whether with strings or numbers or the Booleans, have taken two inputs. And so they're called technically binary operators. Binary doesn't mean ones and zeros. Binary means you're dealing with a pair of things. So when you count in binary, it just means you have two numbers to work with, zero and one. And these binary operators take two inputs. This operator is different. It's the not operator, and it is expressed with an exclamation point. So I can say not true, and I'm going to get false back. The not operator takes in a Boolean, turns it around, and sends out the opposite. And again, not false is true. You can also say is true not equal to false, and that will be true. You can also stack these not operators on top of each other. Not not true is true. The first thing it's going to do is evaluate this not true, turn it into false. Not false is true. If it feels like your brain is going through a blunder, that's fine. It'll feel better later. Now, to be honest, JavaScript's handling of Booleans is a bit of a mess. And in order for me to describe it in a way that does it justice, I think would be a distraction at this point. So I'm going to make a different video that goes into more depth about how Booleans work and how to deal with them, because there are some serious problems that you need to be aware of. But for now, hopefully you understand the basics of values and operators. There are lots of operators. Some of them are expressed with funny characters. Some of them are keywords in the language. When you break down any program to its smallest pieces, the program does everything it does with values and operators. We just wrap a lot of other stuff on top of them. We just wrap a lot of other stuff on top of these values and operators to make it easier for us to think about the programs and organize them in some way. Now even though everything the computer does, it does with values and operators, we don't quite have enough tools yet to make programs that are very interesting. We still need to talk about flow control and conditionals like if-else statements and variables before we can make real programs. We'll discuss those in another video. That is all for now. You'll see me in the next one. Bye.